The Establishment and Principles of Exchanging Self and Others Cultivating the mindset of exchanging self and others is similar to this example. In the past, hearing the name of your enemy would make you generate aversion. However, later on, you became friends. If you don't see them, you may even feel unhappy. Therefore, after training the mind, one can develop the ability to regard oneself as others and others as oneself. The way of the Buddhazatva states, although this practice is difficult, we should not retreat. It is similar to those who used to make you feel fear upon hearing their names. Through the power of practice, if you don't see them, you may even feel unhappy. Moreover, it states, likewise, exchanging self and others is not difficult. If someone wonders, other people's bodies are indeed not mine, so how can I regard others as myself? The answer is, our body, too, is formed from the sperm and egg of our parents. Thus, it doesn't belong to us. However, due to karmic habits accumulated in the past, we perceive it as I. Hence, we can also develop the same attachment to others' bodies as our own. The treatise states, Since you consider the union of others' sperm and egg as yourself, you can also regard others as yourself. Hence, we should contemplate the great benefits of exchanging self and others and the drawbacks of not doing so. Through earnest practice, we can cultivate determination. We need to practice it earnestly. If we practice it diligently, the mindset of regarding others as ourselves and ourselves as others will arise. After understanding it, we should practice it. This passage explains the principles of exchanging self and others. Many people may think, we are different individuals, so how can I exchange myself with others? In fact, Every mindset arises from cultivation. The author explains it in this way. This is the key. Mindsets are the activities and functions of the mind. Every mindset arises from cultivation. The key is the training we receive as the mind arises from causes and conditions. When we have time, we can learn the treatise on the hundred dharmas, which discusses the mind. All mental states, consciousnesses and mental factors arise from causes and conditions. They are all impermanent and uncertain. Affection and aversion, intimacy and distance, enmity and friendship are all constantly changing. Many of our emotions are accumulated from laziness and other bad habits. Although we may appear busy, we are actually stuck in our negative habitual patterns. Some people are very rigid and follow a fixed pattern. Therefore, as we become busier, we tend to feel more suffering, lost and directionless. On the other hand, Spiritual practice is the positive training of the mind, cultivating wholesome mindsets, right understanding and mindfulness. This statement is important. Spiritual practice is the positive training of the mind, cultivating wholesome mindsets, right understanding and mindfulness. Cultivating the mindset of exchanging self and others is similar to this example. In the past, hearing the name of your enemy would make you generate aversion. However, later on, you became friends. If you don't see them, you may even feel unhappy. Here, Lama Tsongkhapa used a vivid metaphor to explain how to cultivate the mindset of exchanging self and others. He explained that it is similar to someone who used to be your enemy. 
Previously, even just hearing their name would make you involuntarily generate aversion. It is because the aversion is so strong that it could easily be triggered. However, later on you became friends. If you don't see them, you will feel unhappy as if something is missing. This metaphor illustrates that the mind can change. As I mentioned earlier, the mind is trainable. Since it is trainable, it is impermanent and subject to change. Of course, it takes time. Transformation does not happen naturally on its own. You shall take the initiative to transform it. You need to actively resolve hostility and convert enemies into friends. If you allow your habitual emotions to direct your actions, transformation won't occur. There are many different mindsets of turning enemies into friends. It could be for the sake of obtaining some benefits or to resolve hostility. As practitioners who believe in the law of causality, we may turn enemies into friends to resolve enmity. We may also do so for the sake of liberation. To attain liberation from samsara, we don't create hostility or harbour anger toward others. Moreover, we may do so after generating buddhacitta. Therefore, there are different mindsets of turning enemies into friends. After gradually building a friendship, if you don't see them, you may even miss them. This illustrates that affection and aversion, as well as hostility and friendship, can change. Love and hatred can also change. This is quite common. Love can turn into hatred, and hatred can turn into love. Intimacy and distance, enmity and friendship are all subject to change. Therefore, after training the mind, one can develop the ability to regard oneself as others and others as oneself. You can intentionally regard yourself as others. This mindset can be trained. Since enemies can turn into friends and vice versa, the mind of seeing oneself as others and others as oneself can also arise through practice. Why is it possible? Because our mind and body are not truly ours. They come from others. The way of the Buddhasattva states, Although this practice is difficult, we should not retreat. It is not easy to practice exchanging self and others. It is similar to those who used to make you feel fear upon hearing their names. Through the power of practice, if you don't see them, you may even feel unhappy. Some people say that it is difficult to practice exchanging self and others. However, we should not retreat. Difficulty does not mean impossibility. If you have never tried it, you will find it difficult. It's because you haven't got used to it. After developing the habit, it will gradually become easier. As long as you practice, nothing is difficult. No matter how difficult something may seem, as long as we don't retreat, if we train the mind effectively, we can successfully exchange ourselves and others. Just like those we used to feel aversion toward at the mere mention of their names. Once they become our friends, not seeing them can even make us feel a sense of loss. This mindset is also gradually developed. Moreover, it states, Likewise, Exchanging self and others is not difficult. This verse means that exchanging one's attitude towards oneself and others is not very difficult. The key is to adjust our understanding and cultivate it repeatedly. In other words, first and foremost, you should understand that this is possible. 
If you don't believe you can do it from the beginning, as some people may feel, you have already given up in your mind. Since you lack faith from the very beginning, you won't make any progress. Therefore, at the beginning, you need to recognize that although this practice is difficult, as long as you cultivate it diligently for a long time, you will gradually accomplish it. If someone wonders, others' people's bodies are indeed not mine, so how can I regard others as myself? The answer is, our body, too, is formed from the sperm and egg of our parents. Thus, it doesn't belong to us. However, due to karmic habits accumulated in the past, we perceive it as I. Hence, we can also develop the same attachment to others' bodies as our own. This passage explains the above doubt. Some people may think, The body of someone else is not mine, so how can I generate the mindset of swapping myself and others? We need to know that our body too comes from the union of our parents' sperm and egg. Upon closer examination, it also belongs to others. After learning this method, we should contemplate in this way. Upon closer examination, you will find that your body was initially formed from the union of your parents' sperm and egg. After absorbing nourishment from your mother, you gradually grew. Your body initially arose from various causes and conditions. It was not something that you created. It came from others. There is no inherent I in the body. We perceive the physical body as I because when the mind undergoes reincarnation, the strong karmic habits accumulated from the past propel it to regard the body as I. From this perspective, we can also develop the same attachment to others' bodies as our own. This is similar to how parents often view their children as an integral part of their lives, sometimes even considering them more important than themselves. In times of danger, some parents would protect their children even at the cost of their own lives. Many parents can do so. If they love their children to a certain extent, they are willing to sacrifice themselves. Sometimes romantic love can also reach such a level. In special circumstances, they are also willing to sacrifice themselves for their partner. Of course, this kind of love is an extension of self-love. In special circumstances, a parent's love for their children can surpass their love for themselves. This is a manifestation of regarding others as oneself. The notion of I can be narrow or broad, depending on individual perspectives. Some people perceive themselves as I, some regard their family as I, and some consider their country as I. This shows that the notion of I is not fixed. It is merely an illusion that arises from causes and conditions. Some people consider their family as I. Thus, They believe that the family is invaluable. They have strong attachments to themselves and their family. Even if they face domestic violence every day, they don't want to break their family apart. Some women live in this way. This may be due to their beliefs in past lives rather than something cultivated in this life. In their past lives, they believed that once married, they had to follow their husband forever. They considered marriage inviolable. Even if they die from domestic violence, they will remain loyal to their husband as a ghost. There were indeed such beliefs in ancient China. It reflects men's possessiveness toward women. They propagated the idea that women should not remarry, considering it immoral and unchaste for a woman to marry more than once. 
It might be good for society and contribute to social stability to some extent. However, it is not always applicable, as the partner might be wicked or prone to domestic violence, etc. In such unfortunate situations, the traditional moral code cannot be applied. Therefore, considering the family as I can also be terrifying. Some people consider their country as I. They are willing to sacrifice their lives and fight bravely for their country. Hence, I is not a fixed thing. It is just an illusion that arises from causes and conditions. Since I is not fixed, we can exchange ourselves and others by modifying our default settings. The connotation of I can change. The way of the Buddhasattva states, Since you consider the union of others' sperm and egg as yourself, you can also regard others as yourself. This means that the body is formed from the sperm and egg of our parents. Because we perceive the body as I, we become so attached to it. Likewise, we can also cultivate this perspective toward others. When it comes to benefiting sentient beings, we may often perceive ourselves and others as separate entities. However, we are actually part of sentient beings. Essentially, we are one. Indeed, we are essentially one. It is similar to how waves are essentially one after returning to the ocean. Although each wave may appear as a separate entity, they are essentially part of the same ocean. Waves ultimately return to the ocean, right? Hence, we should contemplate the great benefits of exchanging self and others and the drawbacks of not doing so. Through earnest practice, we can cultivate determination. If we practice it diligently, the mindset of regarding others as ourselves and ourselves as others will arise. After understanding it, we should practice it. Therefore, we should contemplate the great benefits of exchanging self and others and the drawbacks of not doing so. It is an analytical meditation. This analytical meditation is important. Without such observation, you won't generate sincere diligence in the practice. We should observe and contemplate the great benefits of exchanging self and others and the drawbacks of not doing so. This practice requires correct understanding and contemplation. After adjusting our insights through contemplation and generating the correct understanding, we should practice diligently. After correcting our understanding, we should also think in this way. Diligence means continuously applying a proper mental effort. By continuously strengthening this contemplation, we will be able to regard others as ourselves and ourselves as others. It means continually thinking in this way. Since this principle is correct, we should constantly contemplate in this way, strengthening this insight and understanding. As one progresses in practice, it will become an instinct. When a bodhisattva reaches a certain stage, exchanging self and others becomes their instinct. When they are with others, they spontaneously exchange themselves and others without needing to remind themselves. At this point, you have truly become a bodhisattva. When you are with sentient beings, you always exchange yourself with them. When you are with anyone, you first exchange yourself with them. Thus, you will quickly understand their state of mind, roots of virtue and needs. You will know how to benefit and guide them. Since you don't think about yourself, you can benefit others selflessly. 
when you are with sentient beings, you regard them as yourself. Hence, you serve them wholeheartedly. As ordinary beings, we tend to think about ourselves all the time, but now you shall always think about others. No matter who you are with, you should wholeheartedly consider their well-being and treat them as yourself. Jesus also said, Love your neighbour as yourself. I often heard my mum say this when I was young. Loving others as we love ourselves is synonymous with exchanging self and others. Therefore, this teaching is also available in Christianity. Those who attain this state are bodhisattvas. Those who follow the human and heavenly vehicle cannot reach the high level of loving others as oneself. Only bodhisattvas can achieve this. One can gradually embody it after practicing exchanging self and others. It takes a process. Somehow we may still be self-centered. Take your time to practice. If you focus on benefiting others most of the time, the attachment to yourself will gradually weaken and eventually disappear. At that point, you will benefit others selflessly. In this way, self-attachment will gradually diminish. Mahayana Buddhism uses this method to eliminate self-attachment. It is a practice of eliminating the attachment to self in our daily lives, unlike the Theravada way of meditating on non-self during sitting meditation. They are both methods to eradicate self-attachment, but the Mahayana approach may be more effective. Therefore, the author stated that by continuously strengthening this contemplation, we will be able to regard others as ourselves and ourselves as others. After acquiring the relevant understanding, we should practice it earnestly. With the right understanding and views, we should contemplate it earnestly and practice it repeatedly. This is because the mind arises from causes and conditions. By continuously nurturing and strengthening it, it will undergo a qualitative change. A qualitative change in the mind occurs after a quantitative accumulation. Eventually, you will be able to exchange yourselves and others naturally without needing to think about it consciously. Upon seeing anyone, you will spontaneously exchange yourself with them. Since you wish to benefit and guide them, you will first think about their happiness and well-being, pondering how you can help them. After reaching a certain stage, you will act like this. In this regard, I have deep experience.